One year and one month ago, I got a septoplasty on my nose in order to fix my deviated septum. I had a super bad deviated septum, like pretty much the entirety of my left nostril was completely blocked off because of it, so I got surgery when I was 18 to fix it last summer in June. I made a video last year talking about my experience one month later. In that video, I detailed my pre-surgery experience, my post-surgery experience, and then that entire week of recovery time. That was like the worst week of recovery. I will leave a link to that video in the description box at the end of this video and also at the top right now. So if you haven't seen that and you're interested in knowing the experience pretty much right around when that surgery was happening, that's a good video to check out. But this is my sort of like one year update. Basically, it takes around six months for some people's septoplasties to completely heal and like the swelling to go down and so I have um, completely healed at this point since it's a year later so I just wanted to talk about everything post one month recovery and now up until one year later and sort of the effects like the pros of having the surgery like what it has done for me since I've completely healed. First off I'll start with my recovery how long it took before my nose was completely healed and I can't remember exactly like to the day when it was, but I noticed, I want to say it was about four months when I thought that my swelling had completely gone down outside and inside my nose. I want to say my swelling outside my nose went down faster than inside. So it might have only been like two or three months before the swelling of my nose completely went down, but on the inside of my nose it took a little bit longer and I could just tell because it was still hard to breathe sometimes. I think it was about the maybe the end of month four when everything had completely healed up and gone away. They did not do any exterior incisions on me, which means they didn't like cut into my nose from the outside. They did all of the incisions on the inside of my nose. So as for scarring, I don't know if it scarred on the inside of my nostril. I have no way of seeing that. So I don't know if it did, but since they didn't go in exteriorly, I have no scarring outside of my nose. Because what I got was a septoplasty, not to be confused with a rhinoplasty, the outside appearance of my nose has not changed whatsoever. My nose is still as big and bumpy as ever before. Of course the appearance did change right after the surgery and a couple months after because of the swelling, but once all the swelling went down my nose went back to exactly how it was before the surgery. I mean people pair rhinoplasties and septoplasties together, so obviously if you got a rhinoplasty along with the septoplasty your nose would change because that's the point of a rhinoplasty, but because I did not and I just stuck to the septoplasty my nose has gone back to normal and exactly how it looked before the surgery. So now past the recovery side to the pros of getting the surgery and the effects that it has had on my nose. I used to get headaches, like really, really bad headaches all the time. And I always wondered sort of why that was and what the problem was. And a lot of people say that when you have a deviated septum, that can really affect headaches because you can get pressure buildup sort of in the front of your head here because the like air can't get through your nostrils as easily because one is like completely blocked off and that causes headaches. So one of the effects of the septoplasty was supposed to be to relieve a lot of my headache. Now, this is tricky territory for me simply because I live in two different places. During Christmas and summer, I live in a different city than I do during the school year because I'm in college and different locations can have varying effects on my headaches and like my allergies and stuff. When I come home and I'm living in the place that I lived whenever I have my deviated septum, I still get headaches. But whenever I go to school, which is in a different city a couple hours away, I really don't get them that often. I don't know if I should say that me not getting headaches that much um, now is because of where I live now or because of the surgery. I really have no idea if it was from the surgery or from the location of where I'm living at the time and my allergies acting up. As far as breathing goes, that is where I notice all of my difference really because the headaches I don't really know if it made a difference on, but breathing it definitely made a big difference. So I explained this in my other video, but I broke my nose when I was like five or six and that's what gave me my deviated septum. It took this, you have like two things going up your nasal passage and when I broke mine, it went like this to the left and that's what completely basically blocked off my left nostril. So because of that, it was close to impossible for me to breathe out of my left nostril. I still could sometimes, but for the most part it was it was basically a useless nostril. It was just there for decoration. And then that would make me have to pretty much fully rely on my right nostril to breathe in and out of, and that is bad when you're like me and you have allergies, like I've been talking about. I would 
have no nostril here and then usually a stuffed nostril here so I had to breathe through my mouth a lot of my life because of the constant stuffiness I had to deal with. I lived with a stuffy nose basically. I rarely ever didn't have a stuffy nose. Since the surgery I can count on probably my fingers how many times I've had a completely stuffed up nose. So that obviously helps with my breathing. I don't have to be a mouth breather anymore. I can breathe through my nose pretty much all the time. I think I still have had to breathe through my mouth occasionally when my nose is stuffed up or just Honestly, I want to say sometimes it might even be out of habit because I lived my entire life breathing out of my mouth pretty much. I used to always joke that if I ever got kidnapped and someone like put their hand on my mouth or tied up my mouth so I couldn't talk, I would just die because I, I wouldn't be able to breathe through my mouth and I wouldn't be able to breathe through my nose. So now if I ever got kidnapped and someone covered up my mouth, I wouldn't die immediately because I could breathe out of my nose now. Reasons to have a septoplasty. The stuffiness and all, I didn't really notice after surgery immediately because, well one, as I explained in my other video, for the first week of surgery you have splints or packing in your nose that pretty much prevents you from being able to breathe through it. Even once those were taken out for a while I couldn't breathe through my nose because of the swelling. So I want to say the first month after surgery I couldn't really breathe through my nose that much. I don't really remember. I probably say in that last video because that was a one month update but I really don't remember off of just thinking of it in my head, I don't remember. I just know that it took me a little while before I noticed any sort of effects of the surgery because of the swelling. It just seemed like my nose was the same because I still couldn't breathe through it. But clearly that went away because now, as I've said, I can breathe perfectly through my nose when my allergies aren't acting up, which isn't that big of a problem uh, when I'm back at school. I feel like this is a really short video, but I mean, that's, those are the effects basically right of having a septoplasty mine was headaches and being able to breathe definitely the breathing one has improved the headaches like I said I don't know if that was if that's an environmental thing or if that's a nose thing I just I can't be sure anyway I hope this video was helpful to you if it was please give it a like you can also subscribe to me if you are interested um, if you have any questions about the surgery or post-surgery or one year later or anything like that, you can leave it in the comments of this video or you can go ahead and check out the last video and I might have addressed any questions that you have. I, Like I said, I talk very in-depth about everything surrounding the surgery in the last video, so a lot of your questions might just be answered there. So if you don't care about how I got my deviated septum, I recommend skipping a lot of the beginning of the video because that's what I'm talking about. So just skip through the beginning and get to where I talk about pre-surgery and then watch from there on out. That's what I recommend. But if your questions are not answered in that or in this, feel free to leave them in the comments and I will answer them to the best of my ability. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Bye guys.